Welcome to Inside the Admissions Office, your one-stop shop for expert advice on the smart way to get in. My name is Ellen, and each episode I'll bring you an interview with a former admissions officer, a graduate of top college, or an admissions expert. These interviews will take you inside the admissions office and will be full of behind-the-scenes knowledge, first-hand experiences, and application tips will help you get into your dream school. If you'd like to chat with one of these experts, you can sign up for a free consultation at the link in the description of this episode. Today, we'll hear from Karen Kerr, a former admissions officer from the University of Miami Frost School of Music, the University of Michigan School of Music, Theater and Dance, and Indiana University Southeast, about how students can strategize their arts extracurriculars for their college applications. Hi, Karen, how are you today? Hi, Ellen, I'm great. And I wanna thank you for having me on the podcast. Of course, we're very excited. I haven't done an ep episode like this before, so I think it's gonna be a good one. Okay. So just to start out with, could you, could you tell me about yourself? Could you tell me about your admissions background? Um, how does your admissions background differ from maybe somebody who's only worked in academic programs? Sure, uh, I'm happy to. Uh, you know, I started out in general admissions many, many years ago, and uh, I knew immediately that I loved it. I loved working with students and families but I was fortunate enough to use my music background to move into some very high profile schools, the University of Michigan uh, School of Music, Theater and Dance, and then the University of Miami Frost School of Music. And so I've felt really fortunate that I was able to help music students, um, but I also had a really strong ground or framework in general admissions as well. But there are some differences, you're, you're totally right. And, uh, you know, music students oftentimes when they're looking at a high profile music school within a liberal arts college or a state school, uh, they still have to go through the general admissions process, but there are additional steps for the music or the performing arts part of it. So uh, a little bit more specialized uh, because they're focusing on something that's very specific. And so in those cases, were you focusing on the academic side of the student's application while faculty would be focusing on the performance side for an audition? Right. In the schools that I've uh, worked for, the faculty are, you know, obviously the experts as far as the music portion. They're the ones reviewing auditions or portfolios of compositions, whatever may be the required piece of material. Uh, while an admissions officer like myself and someone from the general university admissions office would be looking at other factors in their application. And you also have a certificate in college counseling from UC San Diego. Uh, this is quite unique. So could you tell me about this program? What kind of things do you learn about it? How has it impacted your work? definitely has helped me understand more of the general admissions and counseling side since I've transitioned into college counseling. Um, the certificate program I did was designed to address uh, the most relevant issues a counselor would need to understand when working with students and families. So for example, some of the issues we focused on were uh, college selection, so building that school list, uh, making sure your high school preparation was strong so that you would be competitive when it was time to apply. Uh, we also talked about testing options and, um, for example, early action, early decision strategies. Um, also included in my certificate program was a hands-on practicum where we did in-depth case studies and projects. And with your admissions background, I'm sure that you came into the program already with a lot of knowledge, but is there anything that really surprised you? Um, I think the, just the highly competitive nature of, you know, all the schools across the country now, just how much more competitive it just keeps getting every year. Um, and so working with counselors and for me, having this background, this additional background of a certificate where I learned from experts who were already in the field doing it, I thought that was a really helpful insight. 
And so arts extracurriculars are really uh, common, really popular, like you said, music. So students will play the piano, the flute, they'll do band, maybe they'll sing theater background, maybe students an actor, maybe they work backstage, a sound designer, students maybe are interested in photography or fashion, all these different kinds of activities and extracurriculars. But I would say probably a majority of these students aren't going to study that in college. Um, they might even have like, uh, like a very juxtaposed interest. So they have um, 12 years of experience playing the piano, but they're going to go to college for engineering. And so a lot of students and families, I think, struggle to kind of bridge that gap because these activities seem so disparate. So how do you recommend that they approach these activities in terms of their college applications? Is there a strategy for how can they include these activities? Um, can they be a strength for the application? Definitely, they can, they can be a strength. And um, every, you know, every situation is a little bit different. So that's why it's important to work with your ingenious team to find the strategy that works for each individual. But in general, music and other performing arts, uh, extracurriculars can lead to a strong background and show uh, leadership skills, for example, um, and also a collaborative nature. Musicians are really known, especially if they played in ensembles throughout high school, this can really show the collaborative nature of your skill set. Also, um, you know, performing arts uh, are a way that students can show how they would contribute on campus as well. So um, this would also be, you know, for example, you're not going to major in music like we talked about, but you can consider options like you're going to want to continue and perform in an ensemble. And this would be a way that you could um, contribute to the campus environment. Marching band and pep bands are another great example. And schools like to know this about students, right? So not, are, not only are you just going to come to their school and be in a classroom and be a highly productive student, but also how are you going to contribute to the campus environment? And that can that can go a long way toward helping somebody stand out on their application. Um, early on, I think about a year ago, I did an episode specifically on college admissions for student athletes. And it's a really, really similar situation where somebody might have done swim team for four years and they're not gonna be recruited for college, but in their applications, they can highlight, you know, their collaboration as a teammate, they can highlight that they have just exemplary time management skills to spend so much time at, um, I want to say rehearsal because I have an arts background, but that's not what you call it for sports. <laughs> practice, yeah, practice, <laughs> swim rehearsal. Yeah, practice, and it shows that they have just wonderful time management to keep their grades up with that. So it seems like it's a really similar situation. Very much so. You know, musicians and other performing arts students, they might be doing theater or musical theater at their school as well as in their community. And so all these activities take a lot of time, especially if they're um, competing at a high level, made it maybe in uh, state level competitions oftentimes. So uh, there's also their own practice time they have to do outside of school. And so it, it can lead to you know, ways to showcase their time management skills, their organizational skills. And keep in mind that performing arts teachers, your photography teacher, whatever it may be, can be an excellent source for a supplemental letter of recommendation. And sometimes we encounter that parents are really worried that these activities aren't, you know, quote unquote, useful. And they'll say, you know, should my kid, should they quit piano? Like they're a freshman in high school, they're a sophomore in high school. Um, should they quit piano? Should they quit band? Is this not like a useful uh, activity because it's not going to quote unquote help them stand out? And so what would you say to a parent who's coming to you with that situation? Yeah, I mean, I think these types of activities can be very useful as extracurriculars. Again, we understand it's not what the student is going to focus on during their college career, but they do exemplify all these characteristics that we've talked about and that can be very valuable on a college application. 
And, and so, you know, sometimes they can even provide an unexpected connection to the application persona. And so the example you gave of a student, you know, who's played piano maybe for 12 years, but is going into a STEM program, that's a unique way to identify yourself. And so um, while, you know, while it's not going to be their focus, I think extracurriculars in the arts can be very important, but I also think extracurriculars should be enjoyable for the student as well. Right, yeah, I usually tell families that if a student loves an activity, they should do it. And the only reason they shouldn't do it is if they don't love it or if it is detracting from their classwork or activities that they find more helpful. But yeah, you know, even adults, it's great for them to have hobbies, to learn languages, to take piano class and it can be like a really important outlet for students especially these really highly competitive students who are experiencing a lot of academic stress. Right I mean the arts are you know a great way to expand your mind and especially if you are interacting with other students from all kinds of different backgrounds so they can be very useful in helping students um, also you know just kind of get outside or think outside the box of whatever their primary focus is. And you highlighted that admissions officers are often drawn in by applicants who can make these unexpected connections, like, you know, between piano and engineering, or um, maybe like a STEAM applicant, so that science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And so could you talk a little bit about these applicants who are able to make these connections and what you think makes them successful versus kind of like what's like a failed STEAM applicant look like, you know, like somebody who tries to bring on bring on that persona, but doesn't necessarily succeed? Yeah, I mean, I think it can be a fine line, right? Uh, again, it's not going to be your focus, but you do or you are able in many cases to highlight these other skills that make you an interesting applicant, that make you, uh, you know, a good citizen on campus. And so I think that's why it's important to, again, you know, talk to your ingenious team about things like, how important is this activity to me? Do I want to continue it in any capacity during my studies? You know, so again, I'm not going to be a major, but maybe I do want to be in an ensemble, or maybe I do want to take, uh, you know, or do a theater production or take a photography class. So those are all really important things to discuss with the team. And then you can develop a strategy for how it would look on your application and how it can play into your application persona. Um, is it better, you know, to show that you're a multifaceted uh, student um, and that you've got experience that can be valuable, you're well-rounded? Um, these, you know, again, uh, when application or when admissions professionals are reading applications, these kinds of experiences can often make an applicant stand out. And for students who don't work with us, these are conversations that you can have with your parents, that you can have with your college counselor, that you can have with maybe teachers at your school who you're close with, you know, mentors, coaches. Um, yeah, don't be afraid to have these conversations with them. Um, let them help you plan for the future. And I, yeah, I'd like to talk more about application strategies. So say that we have a student and they're interested in engineering or they're interested in history um, and they, they spend a lot of time in high school doing theater. They love theater. What aspects of the application could they use to highlight theater without overwhelming their key interests or main interests? So um, again, each situation might be a little bit different, but uh, a student, for example, could take their experience in theater and relate it to, you know, how they might use those skills towards their other classes, even though they might be very uh, different subjects or unrelated. Um, a lot of times you can take the skills you learn and apply them toward being successful in your primary area. Um, uh, again, you know, it's really something that you have to think seriously about. How can I use my particular set of skills? And every situation will be a little bit different, but. For the example of history, um, I would just go for theater. Uh, careful listeners know, obviously, because I just said swim rehearsal. Um, 
but yeah, no, there's like a whole discipline called performance studies, which is just um, putting like the, the ideas of theater onto like the real world. And so there's like all these uh, academic professors and theorists who like take ideas of theater and performance and they put it onto like the worlds of politics and history. So when I was in college, I wrote a paper about how I think like Louis XIV used like theater and dance to create like political absolutism. And so I think these connections aren't always as clear to high schoolers. That's kind of maybe the more stuff that you're gonna, it's something that is more common in college, I think, to look for these like deeper connections. But if a student can find these deeper connections, I definitely think it's gonna help them stand out. It's gonna show uh, the admissions officers that there's someone who thinks critically, who thinks deeply. I agree. I think you're so right that it, it probably is more common at the college level, but this is, you know, this is only the beginning of, of their using their skill set. And oftentimes they might have a historical perspective um, as far as for music, as theater, and um, that historical perspective can sometimes also play into how they approach their studies too. Right, and if you have somebody who like has done ballet their whole life and they're a STEM student, you know, like the physics of dance is such an interesting concept. So there really are so many ways to like find these unexpected connections. Or like you said, it could just be as simple as um, the student wants to continue this as an extracurricular in college. And so that's an opportunity for them to do some research, some school specific research. So. Uh, I went to USC, so a student applying to USC, they might do some research and they would find out that USC has a really big student theater, theater community. And so they might talk about in their application, you know, like, um, I want to minor in theater and I want to get involved in student productions. So this is a great opportunity to get really specific about the resources the school has to offer. Right. And, you know, many times if students have participated in a particular art form, for many, many years, it's not something they want to just give up because they're going away to school, right? So uh, part that could be very important in researching the type of school you're going to go to, what kinds of programs they offer. You know, are you able to incorporate a minor in photography or dance or whatever it may be? So those can become very important factors. Uh, that you, again, you have to decide how important it will be for you individually to do this as part of your continuing education. And some schools like USC, they do look specifically for students who are going to be really involved in campus. Uh, then you have schools like Yale who look for students with like dual interests. So as you do your school list research, there's definitely schools where um, having these multiple interests, even if they're disparate, is actually a bonus. Right, uh, many schools, you know, yeah, you're gonna focus on whatever your major is, but being a multifaceted person uh, is important for the development, not just of your college application, but throughout your life. And so if you have a student, let's say again, they're interested in, um, they're gonna study engineering, but they love music, they've done music their whole life, how do you recommend that they do school list research so they can find a school that, you know, perhaps they can do a music minor or they can just get involved in orchestra on campus? Yeah, I mean, obviously we would spend time finding schools that meet their primary needs first. And, and we might have a large list and then we would have to drill down further and investigate, okay, does the school also have a music program? Can non-majors be active in it? And in what capacity is it, you know, is it very limited? Or are they gonna be able to be satisfied with their level of involvement if it's only taking a few classes here and there? Or do they want a full-blown music minor, for example? So that would just take a little research. A lot of times you can find those kinds of answers on school websites. And of course, it's always, uh, you know, schools have admissions people who are there to help and you can always contact them and get more information as well. School visits are also an excellent time to check out the kinds of opportunities, what it would be like to be a student there. 
for sure. You're going to go and check out the engineering school when you visit. You're going to visit some classes. You're going to meet with someone. But also you might take part of the day or the trip to a particular school to visit their performing arts department or their music department and see what it's like to be part of that as well. Right, and then it's super easy. You can look up. Um, I think every university will have a list of student organizations. All the student organizations, all the clubs on campus have to be registered with the university. So you can easily look up and see, um, you know, like what dance clubs this school have. Like my school had dance clubs, like for specifically for so many just like different styles of dances and dancing. And you can look up like, uh, do you have to audition for chamber orchestra? Do you have to audition for the music minor or can you just apply to it? And this will all just kind of like be important as you're building your school list. That's a really good point, Ellen, that, um, you know, some schools, depending on high, how high profile the, the music department is or the theater department is, whatever it may be, um, some of them may have limited opportunities for non-majors. And even as a non-major, you might still have to audition because it is such a high profile program. And so all those things would be important if you wanted to, you know, be really involved. Um, and then other schools, it'll be much more flexible. There'll be a lot more options. And so all that research, you know, that goes into your application process and decision making. I also tend to meet parents who are worried about not that their student is involved in the arts, but that they're involved in something that's like, quote unquote, too common. So they'll say like, um, my kid plays piano, but all of the other kids at his school also play piano or all the other kids in our community also play piano. So is that something they need to be worried about? You know, because I, I can imagine like taking it to the extreme that there's parents who are trying to find like the most like niche possible in instrument to like get their toddler into. So is this something to be concerned about? Well, certainly my, my years of experience in, in music admissions uh, has taught me that some instruments are much more <laughs> common than others. And there are, there are some that are always high need, right? So oboe and bassoons. And, um, but as a parent, I wouldn't worry too much about that because Again, I think being involved in these kinds of activities can lead to a way to individualize the student. Um, music and performing arts students oftentimes have experiences, regardless of what instrument they play or what art form they're doing, uh, they oftentimes have experiences that other students just, just don't have. And so it can, it can be a unique way to highlight that particular student's uh, yeah, you know, maybe they play piano, but maybe they had uh, a really important competition that in, was impactful to them. And you can use those kinds of experiences to differentiate yourself. Yeah, and, you know, maybe they play like the jazz piano, or maybe they like go to a retirement home and play show tunes or something, right. you know, like there's definitely opportunities to differentiate yourself, even within the instruments. Definitely. I also have encountered... Uh, parents who have this strategy kind of that they want their kid to get into like an elite college so they want their kid to go to Yale so they like maybe like kind of hope like okay like my kid plays the oboe so maybe they can get into Yale because Yale needs an oboe player is that would you call that like a misconception um so in general again from just years of experience at music schools again there are some instruments that are just always going to be high need areas and if you play that instrument and you play it well enough to get in then it can help in some cases yes um harp oboe bassoon you know but that's not always going to be the case um just because you play that instrument doesn't mean you're going to be the right fit for the school or it's gonna be the right fit for you. So um, yes, in some circumstances, it can give you, uh, you know, some potential, um, but that's not always the case. Um, and, and maybe each situation is just a little bit individualized. Yeah, I think in general, you just can't um, like 
plan on something so specific long term. So for example, we do a lot of episodes that are school specific. So I'll talk to an admissions officer from Yale and say, you know, what does a Yale admissions officer want? And usually at the end of the episode, I ask if a student is really interested in Yale and they want to go to Yale, what should they do to prepare? And across the board, always, always our admissions officers say, don't, don't try to prepare to go to one school. You know, admissions really doesn't work like that. The best thing you can do is authentically pursue your interests. And then you're going to be the kind of candidate that a lot of schools like. Right. And I think as an admissions counselor are reading applications and essays, they do want that genuine quality to come through. Um, they read a lot. And so that's, again, another way that you can differentiate yourself and and focusing too narrowly on one particular school could, you know, could put you at a disadvantage. So would you say for parents of much younger children, so parents whose kids are in middle school, elementary school, kindergarten, the womb, if they're thinking like, oh, I need to get my kid involved in some sort of art or music subject, and they're thinking about college admissions, would you say that's a misconception? And it's more so like, you should get, get them involved because it, it's good for them. Like, I think there's proof that like piano makes you better at math and it makes you a more like holistic, diverse thinker, but it's for those reasons, not kind of like, oh, it'll get me into college. Yeah, I mean, I don't think any art form should just, should be jumped into lightly. Uh, again, I think the most important thing is that the student likes it and enjoys it. And that will lead to better experiences uh, and better opportunities to maybe use that uh, experience down the road. But first and foremost, it should always be about what the student enjoys. And for students who, this is another common thing. So say the student wants to study the arts in college, they wanna pursue theater. Uh, their parents want them to pursue something maybe a little more safe like STEM or even just like English humanities. Um, how do you kind of help families who do have that conflict between parent and child where, you know, the families want something that's a little more safe and they're not sure if it's worth the student to like study their passion. So there are a lot of options available now that weren't available years ago. There are arts management programs now where you can still focus on theater if that's what you want to do, but, but you're getting this broader major that will make you even more marketable. So there are options like that out there. Again, finding the right school that has those programs would be key. Um, and then there are options for double majors as well. Um, so maybe a school that has a strong theater program and also another area that the parents feel is a safer bet could be combined in some way into a major minor or a double major. Um, again, though, we want, you know, we want our students to be happy and uh, have a good experience. But there are ways now and many, many schools have options where you can combine your interest and still earn a very marketable degree for a career after you graduate. I think it's really similar to what we've been saying about how students can communicate these skills that they gained from their art uh, extracurricular in their college application. It's actually really similar for job applications. So as I said, I studied theater and dance in college, but it was actually quite easy for me to make a transition into marketing from that and easy to find internships and eventually jobs. Because um, if you are involved very heavily in these subject areas, you will find that you do develop a lot of different skills that are marketable. And so, yeah, you kind of just have to be like a go-getter and just like take some time to reflect and think about which of these skills can be transferable. Right. And, and I'm, I'm right there with you. You know, I was a musician um, and I feel like those skills helped me immensely. Uh, during my admissions career and with presenting and understanding the music background, the music mentality of the students. And so those skills are very transferable to other areas. Yeah, if you take somebody who's interested or has experience with theater and then they want to transition to business or marketing, you know, 
who better than a theater major, a theater student to understand audience? Audience is so important in marketing. Who better to understand audience segmentation and how to communicate different messages to different audiences? Right. And not all students like know to make these connections. So if you are making these connections, whether it's in your college application or later in a job application, like you'll definitely stand out from the pack. And some colleges and some jobs like even really do like people who have these like unique backgrounds. That's something that they look for specifically. Yes, um, the, this type of background can be really beneficial. Again, it just makes you a well-rounded person. You are often able to relate to people in a different and more personal way because you do have that understanding of the arts. And um, as we know, you know the, that's the way a lot of people are touched. And even though you're playing an instrument, you're not even saying anything, you're communicating with your audience uh, in a different way and you can apply those skills towards almost every facet of your life. Do you think there's a difference between being a well-rounded person and a well-rounded student? Because of course we know colleges have moved away from the idea of well-rounded student and they want someone who's angular, someone who puts a lot of focus and um, intentionality on a specific area. So do you think in maybe their academic focus, a student can be angular and super focused on engineering, on history, find a lot of depth in that, but maybe still be a well-rounded person who still plays tennis or still plays the violin? Oh, most definitely. Yeah, I mean, your whole, your whole academic focus can be on one particular thing. Um, but again, maybe you have this outside interest and it contributes more to your, you know, your whole being um, rather than just that academic aspect. So most definitely. Have you encountered very common mistakes in how students reference their arts experience in their applications, whether that be in letters of recommendation, supplemental essays, personal statement, in the activities list? Well, I think it's important, again, to make sure that the arts aspect is contributing to what you want to do, right? It can't take over the focus if you're not going to be a major. So there's a unique balance between using those experiences to enhance your persona, um, to show how those valuable skills can be applied in other areas of your studies. Um, and, um, and keep in mind that even though you might get a supplemental letter from an arts teacher, again, we want them to talk about you as a whole and how those skills can be transferable, not just you as an artist or as a musician. Um, we're, we're looking for ways that those um, experiences can contribute to the other part of you. When I talked to admissions officers and graduate coaches on our company about um, maybe like sometimes a strategy for a STEM student who comes from like a competitive STEM school is instead of having letters of recommendation from two STEM teachers to have a letter of recommendation from their biology teacher, but then like their English teacher so that they kind of have this like unexpected humanities angle. So would you say it's like similar of, you know, approaching even if it's for like a third supplementary letter, like a, a music teacher, um, a director outside of school, that kind of stuff, and they can just provide this like a third perspective on the student? Certainly, if a supplemental letter is allowed or accepted by the school, I think it's an excellent way to supplement um, the, you know, the STEM and the humanities aspect of it. Um, but again, those supplemental letters should really highlight how the skills you've earned can contribute to what you're going to be doing. Um, and and you're right, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, your band director or your art teacher at school. It could be from someone you've worked with in the community. Let's say you play in a youth orchestra, um, your director, or, or even your private piano instructor, or if you went to a summer arts camp. Those, uh, those kinds of people, they're professionals, and they could contribute in that way as well. 
So students, especially at top schools, so like the Ivies, they can submit an art supplement totally like kind of separate from their application. So they're applying to be a history major, but they can submit a supplement of them like singing a song if they study classical voice. So how do you have your students approach these art supplements? Um, how do they kind of relate to their overall application? Are they beneficial? What do you think? Yeah, I think in some cases they can be beneficial if they're approached correctly. And uh, again, you know, this we know this is not going to be their focus, but it can show how they can contribute and be a citizen on campus. So uh, yeah, by all means, do an art supplement if it's available to you, because it does show another side of you that can be, uh, you know, that can be very important in developing your persona. And um, we would just want to make sure that they highlight your skills in a positive way um, and that they are high quality. Do you have any additional advice related to the arts or just in general for students and their families as they're thinking about the college admissions process, whether they're a rising ninth grader or they're you know about to start their college applications they're rising senior just words of wisdom words of support definitely words of support i'm you know i'm from a music background so i'm a big supporter of the arts in every way possible um and i just think it goes a long way towards developing skills that you'll use throughout your life um and and they can be applicable towards your college application process and, and your whole undergraduate experience. So I am a big supporter of that. I realize it's not for everyone though. So, you know, it's, it's not something to jump into lightly thinking that it's, you know, it's gonna really help you if it's not something that the student is interested in that they can't excel at. Um, because again, if we use it as an aspect of the application, we want it to be strong. Thank you so much for joining us today, Karen. I'm sure our listeners appreciate your insight into integrating arts experiences into college applications. For more information, check out our blog linked in the episode description. If you'd like to request any questions, fix that. If you have any questions or would like to request a topic for a future episode, go ahead and give us a follow and send us a message on social media with the hashtag Inside Admissions. That's all for now. Thank you for listening, and I hope you'll join me next time as we continue our journey inside the admissions office.